Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving math prob uh, percentage problems that you will find on page number 29. Please turn to it. Page number 29, the sample problems. We did the first six yesterday, one through six. We're going to pick up from number seven. From number seven, seven, eight, nine, and ten, those four questions are asking us to convert the fractions that are given to us into percentages. Let's keep going, shall we? After, after having done the ten problems that we, that we are about to uh, uh, finish, if you feel that you need more practice, there are some more, more problems that you need to work on. There are some more videos that you can watch. T is math. Just type in T is math, day 13, day 14, or day 15, and you will find some more percentage problems there. Because, you know, the math on the T's is very similar to what you will encounter on the HESI. There are some other problems, some more problems even, in the, in the series of basic math. There are percentage problems you will find from day number 31 through 40, and then day number 51 through 65 you will find problems where we converted decimals to fractions to, to percentages and back and forth. Let's get going. It's all there if you wish to avail yourself. Number one. When I say number one, I mean number seven. We're being asked to convert the fraction into a percentage. The very first one we have is nine tenth. Nine tenth. Before we worry about how to convert that fraction into a percentage, let's first understand what the word percent actually means. The word percent, as you see there, literally means exactly what it says. It means per 100. The word percent, the literal meaning of the word percent means is per 100, or if you like, out of 100. Out of 100. If you can convert this quantity such that at the bottom we have 100, then we are home free. Because as long as the bottom is 100, then whatever you see on the top, that's the percent. Because percent means out of 100. We have a 10 in the bottom. How can we convert that 10 into 100? It's very simple. Take that fraction and multiply top and bottom by 10. There you go. We've done it. 10 over 10 is 1, so we haven't changed anything. Now we have 10 times 10 at the bottom. At the bottom we have 100. As soon as, as, soon as we get a 100 at the bottom, now it doesn't matter what appears on the top. Whatever appears on the top, that's how much percent we have. And 9 times 10 is 90. So 90 over 100 is simply 90% because percent means out of 100. I know it was a very silly question, it was a very easy question, but that's the, that's the method behind it, that's the technique behind it, that's the logic rationale behind it. You have to understand the logic and the rationale behind it so you don't have to memorize things. Don't go around memorizing rules. I hate memorizing rules that the teachers tell you to do. When you want to convert the fraction to decimal, this is the rule. When you have to convert the decimal to fraction, this is the rule. Bloody hell, don't memorize the rules like a, like a parrot, just understand it. Let's do the next one, you will see in a second. The next one is, next one is, 4 fifth. How do I convert 4 fifth into a percent? It's very simple. As long as I can get 100 at the bottom, I'm home free. How can we convert the 5 into 100? Well, it's very simple. Multiply it by 20. 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 20 is 100, so now we have 100 at the bottom. Since we multiply the bottom by 100, we must multiply the top by 100. In order to make sure that we do not change the value of the given quantity. The given quantity is 4 fifth. We can't change that. 4 fifth must remain the 4 fifth, obviously. And we haven't changed it. We simply multiplied the 4 fifth by 20 over 20. 20 over 20 is just 1. Multiplying quantity by 1 doesn't change anything. What do we have on the top? Is simply 4 times 20, which is 80. There you go. 80 out of 80 out of 100 is 80 percent. In other words, 4 fifth that was given to us, 4 fifth that was given to us is 80 percent. Let's do the next one. 1 sixth. The next one is going to get a little prickly. I'm warning you. I'm giving you a fair warning. If somebody asks you to convert 1 sixth into a percent, don't waste your time trying to give them the exact precise answer. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a damn. It's a multiple choice exam. As long as you can recognize the right answer, that's all it counts. You're not required to figure out the exact precise answer. You're only required to be able to spot 
the right answer. As long as you can rec recognize the right answer, that's all that is needed here. In other words, in other words, if you have to approximate, go ahead and approximate. It's not a question of whether I should approximate or not. You should approximate if you want to get a decent score, if you want to get ahead. Approximation is the name of the game. Because when, when they give you something weird like this, trying to give the answer in a precise, precise figure in percentage is just too much work. How can I convert 6 into 100? In other words, in other words, 6 times what number will become 100? I don't know. Let's find out. 60, 60 is just 10 times, that's just 10 times 6, so that's not, we're not even close to 100. Let's add another 30 to it, and that's 5 times 6, so that brings us up to 90. We want to bring it up to, up to 100. If we were to add one more 6, that's going to bring us to 96. It's still not as close to 100. Let's add one more 6. Oh, there you go. 102. That's close enough to me. To me, that's close enough. 100 is approximately, 102 is approximately 100, I would say. 96 was 4 off. This is only 2 off. 102, how many sixes is that? 90, if, if 60 represents 10 six and 30 represents 5 six, that means 90 must represent 15 sixes. 15 sixes, we added one more six, so that's 16 sixes. Not that quantity rather, not that quantity. Since we added one more sixes, that means this quantity must be 16 sixes, and this quantity that we have here must be 17 sixes. Let's multiply top and bottom by 17. Let's multiply top and bottom by 17. And we multiply top and bottom by 17, we end up with, on the top, we end up with 1 times 17 is 17, and the bottom we end up with 6 times 17. 6 times 17, we just found out is 102. And now, we're going to claim that that is approximately equal to 17 over 100. Approximately equal, not exactly equal to, it's approximately equal to 17 over 100. It's approximately equal to 17 over 100. 102 is approximately 100. That's it, we're done. So 1 6 turns out to be, the 1 6 is approximately 17 over 100. Let's write it here. 1 6 is approximately 17 over 100. And therefore, and therefore, 1 6 is approximately 17%. 1 6 is approximately 17%. All of this, all of this work that we did is just fine and dandy. It's okay to approximate, not only that it is okay to approximate, you must approximate. You must approximate, but the condition is that whenever you are approximating the answer, you must always, 100% of the time, be fully cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating. In other words, when you finish approximating, you have to be able to answer yourself whether the correct answer to the question is going to be slightly more than what you got or slightly less than what you got. Here, we got 17 percent. So we got 17 percent because we are, we are claiming that 102 is approximately 100. Originally, technically, we are supposed to divide with 17 by 100. Instead of dividing 17 by 100, uh, uh, instead of, we are supposed to divide 17 by 102 rather. We are supposed to divide 17 by 102. Instead of dividing 17 by 102, we are dividing 17 by 100. We are, we are dividing it by a smaller number. So this quantity is going to be bigger than what it actually is. This is an overestimation. This is an overestimation that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly under 17%. It's going to be slightly under 17%. One sixth is slightly less than 17%. This is one way to approximate. This is the process. Now I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to show you a second method. We are done with this method. Before I erase it, I'm going to... Second method is what we learned yesterday, which is right here. If you want to approximate one sixth, if you want to approximate one sixth, just simply tell yourself that one sixth is exactly equal to half of one third. Exactly equal to half of one third. And half of one third is same as half of 33%. One third, one third we are claiming is 33%. Again, one third is not exactly 33%. One third is 33.333% repeating. It's not exactly 33%, so we have to go back and fix it. We cannot say exactly equal to, we have to say approximately equal to 1 6. 1 6 is approximately half of 33%. 1 6 is approximately half of 33%. Half of 32 is 16. Half of 32 is 16. Therefore, half of 33 would have to be 16 and a half. So this is another way of saying it. 1 6 is approximately 16 and a half percent. There you go. Either this or that. Knock yourself out, you're looking for an answer around 17%, just a little under 17%. Do you understand? 
That's it. Let's go on to the next one. Number number ten. We're not going to do it out exact answer. Number ten is asking us for three eighth. Number ten is asking us to convert three eighth into percentage fraction into percentage. Let's do it. I need the room obviously. Again, again, I'm going to show you two different ways, two different methods of converting three eighth into percentage into percentage. Let's get going. Since we don't have the room here to show both methods next to each other in ejector position, I may have to do one at a time. We'll see. 3 8, 3 8, I hope you're able to see. 3 8, I hope you're able to see is same as 2 8 plus an 8. With me so far? It's very important that you stay in the story. 2 8 can be written as 1 quarter. And 1 quarter in turn is equal to 25%. So far, so good. What about 1 8? 1 8. 1 8, I hope you are able to see, is simply half of 1 quarter. 1 8 is half of 1 quarter because 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 4 is 8. Half of 1 quarter, which is same as half of 25%. 1 8 is half of 25%. 1 8 is exactly half of 25%. There is no approximation going on here. This is exact. 1 quarter is 25%. 1 eighth is half of 1 quarter, therefore 1 eighth would have to be half of 25% exactly. Half of 24%, half of 24% would have been 12%. Therefore half of 25% has to be 12.5%. That's it, we're done. So 2 eighth, 2 eighth is 25%, 2 eighth is 25%, and 1 eighth is another 12.5%. So the final answer is, final answer is 3 8 would have to be 25 plus 12 and a half percent, which is 37 and a half percent. So that was one way. That was one way. Let me show you the second method here. Let me show you the second method here, because like I said, it will be a nice check to position if we can squeeze it in here. 3 8. I'm not going to spell out jet position because I don't know how to spell it. I'm not sure if we ever learned this word in our vocabulary lesson. Jet position means to put two things next to each other for comparisons, for comparison purposes. We haven't learned it in our vocabulary lesson. I intend to cover it one day in our vocabulary lesson. Juxtaposition, putting two things next to each other for comparison reasons. So let's put it here. 3 8, we're going to do the same exact thing, well, not exact same method, but same exact calculation, which is to convert 3 8 into percentage. Here. 3 8 into percentage. Now remember, remember percent we said, remember we said percent means per 100. Per 100, yesterday we learned that. Out of 100 percent means per 100 or out of 100. If we can convert somehow the bottom into a 100, we are home free. Question is, what number times 8, what number times 8 would equal 100? Now that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Here's, here's an easy way out. We know 4 times 25. We know 4 times 25 is 100. 4 times 25 is 100. But we don't have 4, we have 8. We have 8. Since we took the 8 and converted it into 4, since we, double, since we doubled the 4, 4 became 8, we have to take half of that. 4 times 25 would have to be the same as 8 times 12 and a half. There you go. Because, because we, we doubled this quantity, so we have to take half of this quantity. You see that? That's what it is. In other words, we were wondering, we were wondering how we can convert 8 into a 100. 8 times what number will equal 100? Turns out 8 times, it's not going to be a whole number, it's not going to be an integer, but 8 times 12 and a half is exactly 100. 8 times 12 and a half is exactly 100 because 8 times 12 and a half would have to be same as 4 times 25. So let's multiply top and bottom by 12 and a half. Top and bottom by... 12 and a half. Are you with me? So far so good. That was the easy part. 
So we already know now that 8 times 12 and a half is 100. We're going to write that down. I'm going to erase this part. We're done with it. So the bottom is 100. That's what we wanted. We wanted the bottom to be 100. We have achieved this thing. All we have to figure out is what's going to go on the top, which is 3 times 12 and a half. Let's do it here. 3 times, 3 times 12 and a half. And watch what happens. 3 times 12 and a half would have to be, would have to be 3 times 12, 3 times 12, which is 36, plus, plus 3 times a half. 3 times a half, listen very carefully, 3, 3 times a half would be how many halves? 3 halves, because you're multiplying half by 3. 3 times a half is 3 halves. Now, 3 halves is made up of what? If you have a half and a half and a half, well, two halves make a one. Two halves make a one. So three halves is one and a half. One and a half. Three halves is one and a half. So it's 36 plus three and a half, which is same as 36 plus one and a half. 36, 36 plus one is 37. So it becomes 37 and a half. Turns out three times 12 and a half is... 37 and a half and 8 times 12 and a half is 100 therefore 38 would have to equal therefore 38 would have to equal 37 and a half percent 37 and a half percent what do you know isn't that spooky I don't know about you but I'm getting goosebumps because that's exactly what we found here hi George that's exactly what we found here so that's one way of looking at 38 which is to convert the bottom into 100. Anytime they give you, anytime anybody gives you a fraction, anytime anybody gives you a fraction and asks you to convert that to a percentage, immediately ask yourself, quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, ask yourself, how can I convert the bottom into a 100 or something that comes as close to 100 as possible as quickly as possible. As long as you have a bottom equal to 100 or something close to 100, then whatever, you, whatever that appears on the top, that's how much percentage you have. So that was one way. Another way is to recognize the 3 8 is simply made up of 2 8 and an 8. 2 8 is a 1 quarter which is 25% and 8 is a half of a 25%. Half of 25% is 12 and a half percent. Therefore 12 and a half percent plus 25% would have to equal 37 and a half percent. Amen.